it's time to dive a little bit deeper into the world of enteral nutrition. In this med mastery lesson, you'll learn specifics about tube feeding formulas and how to select the right one for your patient. The first thing to know about tube feeding formulas is what they're made of. The carb source in most tube feeds is corn-derived maltodextrin, which is a simple carbohydrate. The protein source is typically milk and or soy-derived, and the fat source is oil from soy, corn, canola, or safflower, with some tube feeds containing medium-chain triglycerides, or MCT oil, an easily absorbed fat. In addition to macronutrients, tube feeds are also formulated to meet the standard patient's daily vitamin and mineral needs. Lastly, as you know, fiber is an essential nutrient that doesn't provide calories. Some tube feeds provide fiber, and others don't. If your patient is appropriate for fiber-containing tube feeds, this is ideal. However, there are some cases where fiber can actually be clinically detrimental. We'll come back to this later. First, when selecting a tube feeding formula, you'll want to pick your calorie density. This refers to how many calories each milliliter of formula provides and ranges from 1 to 2 calories per ml, meaning a liter can provide between 1,000 to 2,000 calories. Fun fact! Many tube feeding formulas will even have their calorie density included in the name. So if you see 1.2 in the name, for example, you know it provides 1.2 calories per ml of formula. Standard or house tube feeding formulas provide between 1 and 1.5 calories per ml and are appropriate for the majority of patients. Formulas with a higher calorie density, also referred to as more compact formulas, have a lower free water content and are used for specific disease states that require fluid restrictions, such as heart failure or chronic kidney disease. They can also be used for patients who have issues tolerating large volumes of formula. The next thing to consider is the degree of digestion the formula needs before absorption. Patients with digestive or absorptive issues may need tube feeds that have been pre-digested, making them gentler on their GI tract. There are three degrees of macronutrient digestion we'll cover now. The first is standard or polymeric. This type of formula contains full proteins which haven't been enzymatically broken down. Standard formulas are the most common type of tube feeds and should be chosen for patients with normally functioning digestive tracts. The second is semi-elemental, also known as partially hydrolyzed. This type of formula contains proteins that have been partially broken down, making them smaller and easier for patients to digest. In terms of fat content, Semi-elemental formulas often have a high MCT oil content, which is easily absorbed. Semi-elemental tube feeds are often used for patients with digestive issues such as severe pancreatitis, inflammatory bowel disease, or following complicated GI surgeries. And finally, the third type is elemental, also known as hydrolyzed. The protein in elemental tube feeds is fully hydrolyzed, meaning it's been broken down to its simplest form, requiring minimal digestion. Elemental formulas also have a very high ratio of MCT oil to regular oil. This type of formula is used infrequently because most patients are well-suited for standard or semi-elemental tube feeds. However, elemental formulas are appropriate in the case of severe malabsorptive states like short gut syndrome or in the case of milk protein allergies, not to be confused with lactose intolerance. While standard formulas are definitely the most common, there are many disease-specific or specialty formulas. Let's look at some of the most common. Let's start with diabetic formulas. These formulas are lower in carbs and higher in protein and fat content to promote better blood sugar control. Please note, though, that just because a patient has diabetes, this does not mean they must be on a diabetic formula. Their overall clinical condition must be considered, as there may be other factors that take priority and mean a different formula would be more appropriate. Renal formulas are low in potassium, phosphorus, and magnesium, and are often high calorie density to minimize total volumes needed. They may also be carb-controlled, as patients with kidney disease often have concurrent diabetes. Next, we have immune-enhancing formulas. 
The aim of these formulas is to reduce complications associated with infection and protect and stimulate the immune system. They can contain a variety of different nutrients, such as omega-3 fatty acids, that are thought to help regulate the body's response to illness and injury. Research is still developing in this area. Whole foods-based formulas are another option. Even though tube feeds provide complete nutrition, they're not as nutritious as eating a varied, healthy diet. The general aim of whole foods-based formulas is to provide feeds that are more similar to food in its natural state, with easy-to-recognize ingredients. Most of these fit within a vegan diet or work for patients with soy and or milk allergies. Lastly, let's talk about additions to tube feeds. Sometimes your patient needs additional or different nutrients than their tube feeding formula provides. That's where additives, also called modulars, come in. Additives are given separately from the tube feeding formula to supplement the nutrients that are lacking. Let's look at the most common tube feed additions, starting with protein. If the tube feeding formula alone doesn't provide enough protein to meet your patient's needs, a protein modular is necessary. These additives are made up only of protein and usually come in a liquid form that's easy to infuse through a feeding tube. Fiber modulars are used to bulk stools for patients with diarrhea. They're made up of soluble fiber, which is a kind of fiber that absorbs water and swells, creating a gel. The additive comes as coarse powder in a packet and is mixed with water before infusing into the feeding tube. And finally, there's free water flushes. Adding extra free water can be useful when your patient has elevated fluid needs. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MedMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MedMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.